Okay, so now you're officially MS-13. Right. So you have the, you know, the protection of, of your homies. Right. But now you have all the other gangs. Right, right. Where you can't just turn around, you know, when, when they ask where you're from, you can't just say nowhere. Right. Now you have to say, I'm MS-13. Absolutely. And if you're enemies with that particular other gang, then it's on site. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, perfectly explained. And the problem with that with me was as soon as we got in, we're like, okay, now I remember getting into MS and being jumped in. And when I remember being jumped in, all I could think about, because there was a carnival that came to the neighborhood in Artmore Park. It's called like Seoul International Park or something. And they came every three months. And as I got taller in MS, you know, I started getting raw for my stuff. It was full of MS members. Now me and my friends that we used to play baseball with, they couldn't go to this carnival, and carnival anymore. And we used to hide or we couldn't go. So now I remember watching from my grandma's house, everybody having fun on the ferris wheel and everything like that me just watching from the window so now when i got into ms now i'm able to go to this carnival now i'm able to go to this fast food if i want to go to school it's point a to point b but a week later a couple weeks later i started to regret my decision because remember how i'm telling you that i walked through other neighborhoods as one there was other gangs and every time when they stopped me they asked me where i was from and i said nowhere right so they gave me that free pass if you will but now they have found out that me and these couple of friends that were a little bit known within other neighborhoods because of kids walking around, they found out that we were from the gang. So now we friended MS-13, but we um, enemied, if you will, everybody else around us. So now we couldn't leave the neighborhood. Now we had to stay right there confined to this certain neighborhood. Yeah. Was 18th Street an enemy of MS-13 by this time? Yes. Okay. So now, and that was considered your main rivals. Correct. Were you running into 18th Street during this time? Well, there was a there was times where um, cars would roll up. It was from different gangs, if you will. It was that um, that machismo, if you will, versus the, the that that machismo uh, uh, of whose gang is tougher. So you bump into them a lot of t most of the times when I bumped into 18th Street members consisted in juvenile camps or juvenile facilities or or, or CYA camps. I remember them always being. Um, one of the deepest gangs, it was always like seven to one or something, you know, the ratio of 18th Street versus um, versus MS. Well, how much violence happened in that first year? I will go ahead and say there was um, there was a lot of violence, you know, but to me, it was something, nothing diff. Well, it, it was different in a sense because now you're the MS-13 member and you're experiencing it directly but me growing up in LA growing up there since I could remember um there was guns drugs there was violence there was shootings there was um killings I remember being six years old one time and there was MS members trying to take over the territory of another gang right there and there was guys that were dressed in heavy metal with the with the long hair, the Metallica days, if you will. And then they did have the machete, if you will, and started um, hacking away at the at the rival gang member there as well. And late at night, I could I could remember hearing the gunshots. And when I was trying to do my homework, the ghetto board just circling around, circling around. So violence within my neighborhood to me wasn't um, wasn't rare. It was almost it became. Um, rare in the it, it was new to me at the beginning when i understood what violence but then it almost became just like another day at the office you would always just have to look around and watch for your back right but now you're expected to commit the violence right uh were you involved in shootings no never never were you shot at i was shot at probably about 15 or 20 times were you hit no, I was never. Um, I was never hit. I remember one specific time where I was being shot at. It, I was drunk and high, and um, I was going. I was going home, and there was a car from probably from sidewalk. You know, on this side of the sidewalk, and I was on the other side of the sidewalk, and it was late, and it was probably one, two in the morning, and they passed by, and they were like, "Hey, homie, you're slanging." And you're saying that as soon as I saw that it was a bunch of gang members with, with within the car, I knew that the thing was was for me to approach the car and for me to to shoot me, right? And I, you know, I was walking around. I was like, no, I'm not. And I remember the guy 
going outside of uh, uh, of his car window and pulling the gun out. And I remember seeing the fire come out of the gun before I heard the the sound. So I ducked and I started jumping fences. You know, I'm back then. You know, me. I remember being shot at you. You start being able to climb all kinds of stuff that you think you didn't climb. You're on survival mode. <laughs> if it has barbed wires or not, and I'm jumping and I'm falling, and I'm bleeding every. I'm falling to trash cans and I'm running. This guy's you know, dumping right behind me. And then I try to get away, you know, I get away and then he gets back in the car and they, they circle, they circle. And then um, I'm seeing the car just passing by like this. And every time it circles, I run a block and I run a block and I live, I, I, I live like three blocks down and I finally make it home. And when I make it home, I see my mother and my grandma with candles right there praying. Right. And, and that's when, and they were like, did you hear those gunshots? You know, and me not wanting to go ahead and worry, I'm like, no, you know, and that became, you know, a norm as well.